Welcome to Art Chats con la Mitotera. I'm your host, Mel Dominguez. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we have a really fun guest today. It's in the culinary arts. Her name is Melissa Hernandez, and you can find her here on Instagram at La Chica Chef. So uh, it's pretty awesome. I, You know what? Everybody in Tucson, if, if you know one person, you might know their friends or their family or whatnot. So I can't actually remember how I met Melissa, but she's a really cool person, and and I'm, it's really, it's a real pleasure to have her on today to share her with you all out there. Um, she is a culinary chef, and I know that right now during the quarantine and the pandemic that a lot of our food service industries have been um, suffering because of that because, you know, that's where we go to gather and meet each other at this dinner table or lunch table. And so it means a lot to have her on today. Uh, we're going to be discussing that. And there's this, um, on the regular, it's been just really beautiful days. The fires kind of calmed down out here on the mountainside. Uh, everything else is still very much like, let's pay attention to what's going on. Let's keep safe. Let's keep each other safe. And and it's the easiest way to do that. All you got to do is wear a mask. And there's a number of people out here in town, like Flowers and Bullets, Tanya Alvarez, um, Los Discos. What's up, everybody? They're, they're making masks out there. So if you still need um, a place to find where you can purchase some masks, um, hit me up on, on DM and um, and we can find you somebody uh, that can get you a mask because they're doing them on all kinds of styles, really cool stuff. And and so it's it's really neat to actually see all our um, our people that know how to sew <laughs> actually put their skills down and, and get going because I know that there's been... Uh, mass production as far as that's concerned with the mask and whatnot. Um, also, there's a lot of activity out there since uh, this, this great pause that we have. Uh, there's a lot of um, food restaurants, including um, the Tamale Company, that are doing um, remodeling and whatnot. So I'm part of that remodel. You'll see some work from me if you visit over on the east side. Uh, that, that's on uh, Sabino Canyon and Tanca Verde. It's inside that little shopping mall near the Ace, and I think it's a Safeway. I can't remember. But they are teaming up with AZ Fit Kitchen, which, oh my God, uh, really healthy food. Uh, the owner, Rob, is super dope. If you ever run into him, I actually, I'm, I'm thinking about having him on as a guest because he's really cool, and I, I like to see what he's done as an entrepreneur uh, with his AZ Fit Kitchen. It's been very interesting to ride along on that um, adventure. Because uh, what do they call themselves, a serial entrepreneur or something? So <laughs> it's really neat to see out there. And for all you other entrepreneurs that are still, um, you know, kicking ass during this time, uh, I just want to let you know that you're you're not alone. We're out here and we're all pushing alongside with you. So if there's anything you need or you want to, uh, and you want to, you know, um, hit us up, we'll, let's strategize. Let's talk to each other about it. There's so many, there's so many, um, you know, possibilities right now, especially because it's downtime. So, our guest, when when we have her come on, that's something that she's been talking about is the fact that this time with the great pause that she's getting a chance to really think about, you know, what what's gonna happen next, you know. <laughs> and so with with that, you know, I I was thinking about it myself and how. Um, this year, 2020, was actually going to be one of the big years as far as, like, food is concerned, where we have, like, not just the food industry, but, like, like chefs and, their, and, and going out and, and, and sharing their food with us all, but also in the most, uh, like, in an artistic way. So it's not just the culinary arts where you're out there in the kitchen. There was actually artists that were painting food. And so I thought that was really awesome. And that was supposed to happen this year. And we also have so many um, eateries here in Tucson. And and so much of the gardens that are, are being created throughout Tucson and taking up space, which is great. Uh, except for that it's it's kind of it's kind of intense right now. But the whole thing, including uh, like Chicanos por la Casa, they have a, a school called Envision. And they were um, showing the young students the culinary arts as well. And why the culinary arts? It's it's a commodity, you know, food is a commodity. That's something that's never going to go away. Like humans are always going to be hungry. 
and and so it's one of the markets that you can actually go out there and 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 help young people get started in their careers and and really when you're in the food industry you learn a lot you learn about you know um your food and and budgets and and what you know what to buy continue to buy what does really well so you get to study what people enjoy also uh, you know it it's all and in bringing people together we, we have our guest joining us. Oh, <laughs> let's try that again. So it, it's just really interesting be, to have all this. We in Tucson are actually designated by UNICEFCO, and there's a number of things. Hey, there's Melissa. Hi. So Instagram folks, this is Melissa Hernandez. Hello. Oh. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I think. Yeah, I can hear you. All right on. Thank you for joining us, Melissa. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Can you tell everybody in, in uh, Instagram land where you're from? I'm from San Diego, California. Um, born and raised there, but I moved here when I was 13 in Tucson. Our parents moved us here forcibly. <laughs> right on, right on. So, I, Melissa, how did we meet each other? Um, I believe it was, um, what was that called? The... Was it a paint night? No, it was the vision board. Oh, that's board right. Night. Yes, really? it was the vision board. That is right. And you know what? How interesting is that? Because everybody there had done a vision board. We were all kind of strategizing together, looking forward into the future. And we met. And I'm, I'm actually, I've, I've been excited since I met you. Oh. Because you had a really good energy. Yeah. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you. Yeah, it was fun chatting you up. Um, thank you, Selena, that introduced us. Yeah, and you know what? That that's. I think that was the biggest intention was to get our networks together. Yeah. And it was at another one of those eateries, American Eco, yes. where we were all in there and it, everything was all cool. Awesome spot. Right. So, can you tell everybody how how did you get into uh, to getting into the culinary arts? What brought you into that? Uh, my my grandfather, which is my dad, he adopted me. Um, he he inspired me, sparked that passion in me. Um, I needed something as a distraction, and he saw that maybe the kitchen would be it, and he was right. Um, as soon as I was able to start helping him in the kitchen, he he just the way he taught me was amazing. I so to this day I tell him I don't know. I thank him so much because he sparked it in me. Um, he used to have me there just watching him cook and he'll tell me, don't write anything down. You know, you know, you have to learn by watching me. He's all, or I won't tell you my secrets. So good thing I learned. And, um, and yeah, that's how it started. And he took me in the summers to work with him in the kitchen. And that's what inspired me that one day I wanted to be a chef just like him. And, and then a food service director watching his boss work. And I was like, Ooh, I want to be like him too. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. I mean, and, and it's really awesome because you feed people, you know, and people, when they, they eat that food, they know they could feel your energy behind that, you know, but I also think that uh, cooking is a science. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and it's fun too, you know, to, to me, it's art, you know, all the colors and the way we present it and, you know, that's, to me, it's, that's what I live for. When people eat my food, it feels good. When people's like, oh, it's so beautiful. And it also tastes good. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, see, I like that. See, and that's what's crazy, because, I mean, you had that ingredient in the way your, your grandfather, your father taught you to learn by, you know, by saving it. It was almost like he was giving you the ingredients for life. Yes, yes. You know, and how to treat life, you know. So I think that that's really awesome. Wow, so where, where were you working? You you were working at St. Luke's? Yes, I was working there at St. Luke's. Um, it's an independent, um, like, assistant living home for low-income elders. Um, and I was their food service director there, and I kind of ran the whole kitchen department and their, their catering department. Um, yeah, I just recently quit. <laughs> you know, um, I just kind of had, you know, losing my mom in December kind of, like, just kind of had this feeling in me that I needed to do something else that I'm, or I needed to take a break and kind of like, you know, soak it in that I've never like actually have paused and like said, you know, is this what you want to do? You know, is this what you, 
you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe I, I've been grieving. Maybe that's why I, you know, I, yeah. I did, I did made the decision I did, but um, I'm happy I did, you know, I'm, yeah. I've, t I've have time to think about where I want to go, where, you know, where I see myself and the things I actually sat back and looked at all the work I've done over the years have been so good soaking it in, you know, kind yeah. of like, wow, I created that, you know, I've never taken time to look at my work and be like, wow, I created, <laughs> you know. No, that's beautiful. I'm glad you took that time because that's, that's a real thing. The food industry, I don't believe that there's any breaks. I've met nope. so many women, right? It's like 24-7. Yeah, you're and on 24-7. <laughs> <Really? laughs> so, so wait a minute, you know, I, grieving, there's no, there's, there's no determined, you know, time frame in that. So that's an ongoing process. But I'm glad that you really did take your, your time and, and that it, you know, the pandemic sucks, but it, it's also a good thing that because now you don't have to really worry because you're with everybody in this great pause. Yes. You know. Yes. And I'm blessed. You know, I've you know, I'm I've always been so family oriented and, you know, united with my little family that we're so small but so big. Um but <laughs> but blessed now just because I actually stopped and kind of enjoyed every moment without being thinking about work, thinking, oh my God, what I have to do next or what I have you know, it's just kind of yeah, that that it's a blessing. You know, it's, it's absolutely. I, I just got out of the because uh, I just got, I left the tamale company right now and they're remodeling and things, but they're still selling food and they have their chefs come in. And I, I was listening to I'm painting and I could hear him. He's like, oh, you add this and you do that and you add here and you add there. And then, you know, he and they and they taste in it and stuff. And I'm like, there's so much that goes into each individual dish. And I don't know how the how they measure things out to get that to taste the same but they have it they have it down and these guys are they're, they're young men back there or they're or they're young women and i'm like how do you figure these things out because i always mess it up yeah <laughs> yeah it's true you know it's like you hand people the recipes and some of them they still don't come out you know and that's the that's where i kind of explain and i say you know what it's something that we i feel like it's something that we have i don't know if it's energy or you know, maybe it's our, our hand sweat. That's what I tell them sometimes. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, there's something about the way people cook, you know, the way, the passion they put in, you know, the way you feel when you cook, you know. I, I feel, I believe in that a lot, you know, and those vibes and the way, you know. Um, that's why I feel sometimes people can't, you know, replicate the same recipe over again, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's a reality. We talked about this. We were like, dude, don't cook if you're mad. <laughs> like, just, just leave it alone, you know? Yeah, you know, it's true. I, I when I cook when I'm mad, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> it's all hot and everything. You can't eat it. You're like, ah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's either a little bit too salty, a little too spicy. <laughs> oh, boy. <yeah. laughs> Tell me this, Melissa, do you, in the middle of the night, do you get those spurts where you go out, you get up and you make something in the middle of the night? No, I, I used to a lot back then um, when I was in college because I was up late. But now, <laughs> you know what happens to me? I think about something at night that I'm like, I, my mind just set on it. And I have to wake up and write it down. You know, it's either a recipe or like something in my mind. Oh my God, this will go good with this. So my mind's always on, you know, food wise. <laughs> but so what's your, what's your, what's your go-to munchie? Like, what do you like? What does Melissa like to eat? Oh, so my go-to munchie is goat, um, goat cheese and fig. I have this. Oh man, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I have this lady that makes the best jams, this fig jam, and I always have it on hand. Like I always have mm. I always have the, you know, the goat cheese, but it's, that's my, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's like no cheese with a cracker or something, huh? You yeah. just kind of, mm -hmm. in the jam. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, but see that, that, see, and I grew up in a household where we had one or two, you know, chefs in the house or they thought they knew how to cook. Yeah. And you'd hear them in the middle of the night, you're like, what the hell are you doing? My cousin was making a big bowl of fudge. I'm like, dude, you're one man. Like, <laughs> Got the little bowl. I'm like, really? Oh, yeah, Jesus. it happens, you know, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, but you know what? When we were talking to you about having some, like having you over to the gallery and whatnot, 
because we wanted to share you with everybody else. We're like, you got to meet this girl. Oh, we, thank you. We're going to have you do like these little, um, what do you call like little sh- the charcuterie boards? Yes. Oh, I'm I'm still down for it whenever you get back to really? yeah. Oh, man. Because yeah. that's good and it's fun. Like when people are just kind of like snacking and drinking and talking, it's like the go-to thing, you know? Yeah, and that's what I think about when I'm creating them. I'm I'm standing there and my mind's just going off. Like it's going off and thinking, okay, what would a you know, what would a person next to the person say? What what are you grabbing? You know, what what goes with what? What should I do? A lot of people are intimidated because they have they don't know how to eat them, you know. But I say it's fun, it's an adventure. You know, you grab whatever looks good to you and put it together. If it's right by side, you know, whoever makes the board knows what they're pairing it with and you know, my mind just goes off, like colors, tastes, you know, is this savory, is it sweet, is it salty? You know, it's an adventure and I like when people, you know, find it so much fun, you know, and that's, I feel like food should be fun, you know? And, yeah. you know, it looks like a piece of art and people don't want to eat it, but it's, you know, it's delicious. It's a reality. And you know what? I've been using food as um, like a connector piece to a lot of folks because like right now there's a lot of uh, like racial tension going on mm-hmm. and it's heavy, but you're like wait a minute who's cooking the food in the background people of color you know what I'm saying or or you're serving something at your table and it's it could be something from around the world that you might not necessarily get along with those people but damn they make the best tacos you know yeah, yeah. you know and that's how I feel at home you know, I feel like, you know, I've been blessed with the family that knows when they sit at the table. It's not about bringing issues up or problems, you know. It's about just kind of asking, how are you doing, you know? It unites us together um, when we're at the table. You know, no issues are brought up, you know. It's just all love, like the food, you know, it unites us. And that, you know, I think it's going to bring us together. Food, it's a lot to do, you know, in our community, you know, it, what brings us together. It's what we go out there and search for when we want adventures to have, or to have a good time, you know? Right. So that's the thing. That's the next best thing to traveling is like, we used to have this annual dinner on, on 420. Like, oh, <laughs> and, I remember that was college time. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're like, everybody bring a dish. And oh yeah. my God, it was like the world was on the table. Yeah. We had ceviche, we had lasagna, we had, you know, and everybody was. Best. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh man, see, that's why you're cool. Like, cause you know this stuff, like, you yeah. know. It brings people together in conversations, start getting deep. You get to know people a lot better when they tell you, hey, that dish, my mom taught me how to make it, or my grandma, or it's in, or it's my tia's recipe, or, you know, or a cousin, or a friend, or, you know, or I saw it on TV, and I'm attempting it the first time, and I'm bringing it here, you know? So, yeah, <laughs> it, it gives people an excuse to, you know, I love potlucks, because it gives people an excuse to use their creativity, you know, like, hey, I'm going to try this dish out, and I'm going to bring it over, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. No, and it's a trip too. Like now, if you visit some of the little local schools, especially Monzo, they they actually harvest their food and sell it at a little farmer's market. And you could taste it when you're eating your food. You can actually taste like the, the carrying of the water and the sun. And I'm like, damn. Yeah. It makes a difference. Do yeah. you do things like that? Do you go and pick fresh ingredients or do you have a special spot you can share with us? Um, actually, I used to go a lot to this, um, it's called Bountiful Baskets. Oh, I'm trying yes. to, yeah, I, have you heard of it? Um, yeah, yeah, they're at Reed Park sometimes. Yeah. That's the la- one of the ladies that runs that is the one that makes my jam. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, man. they have amazing baskets with so much fresh ingredients, you know, and it, it's amazing. There's a different, you know, the flavor that you get when you cook with fresh ingredients and, you know, and I'm not talking about like organic. I'm talking about like fresh, fresh out of your garden, organic, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's a, it makes a difference. And, you know, that's one of my next steps that I want to do is to do a food garden, you know, tomatoes and, you know, potatoes. And, you know, that's, it's on my next goal list. <laughs> Ooh, I can only imagine, but look at Melissa's even saying it too. We got the Jerusalem artichoke there. Oh, you see? <laughs> mm-hmm. It made us try something new. And you know what? Melissa, too, she watches some um, woman on, on the YouTube. I think it's a De Mi, co- no, de mi Casa a Su Cocina. Ooh. And she cooks a lot, a lot of cool stuff. But 
we were introduced to Choyote. Is oh, that how you say it? Choyote, yes. Oh, favorite, oh. Carlos. <laughs> yes. And, uh, I mean, it, make, it makes you feel good, right? Like yes. comforted. Yes. It reminds oh. me a lot of, of potatoes, you know, eating potatoes. Yeah, I'm a yeah. big fan of potatoes. <laughs> but, oh, um, yeah, Chayote, you know, it was hard for me to eat when my mom used to make it in Galos. I used to be like, oh, and now as an adult, oh, my God, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. It's like, it's a thing now. It feels good. It what, is. When, when you actually, when someone else is cooking for you, where do you go? Or who do you go to? <sighs> I I love, I love when people cook for me. You know, anywhere I go, family gatherings, whatever, you know, when they receive you with food, it's like the best gift you can give me. Just because I'm yeah. the one that cooks for the family all the time, you know, I'm the one that does the family, you know, picnics and the family camping. I'm the one cooking all the time. And it's nice to sit down when actually someone cooks for you, you know. It's different when you go to a restaurant because you pay for it, you know, you're I'm paying <laughs> for the service. Yeah. But when somebody actually takes their time to cook something for me, even if it's mac and cheese from a box, <laughs> it makes me happy, you know. And that tells you a lot about how food just kind of unites people and, you know, it kind of brings people together. And it makes me a little closer connection to people when they do that you know yeah no absolutely a lot of times when when you know i'm talking to young people or you know people in general i'll be like so what's up if you guys get down with the the top ramen and they're like oh, yeah. everybody's got their own recipe oh yeah my roommate my roommate selena she actually makes this top ramen out of a simple bag of noodles turns it into i swear like a 15 dollar dish and I'm looking at her <laughs> with her little boiled leg and everything from home. And I'm just like, dude, you're amazing. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you know what? That's what I love so much. And a lot of times um, it's so funny, but I, I, of course, I didn't think about it when I was a young person, but now I do. But a lot of the times when I when I want a soup or like a cocido or something like mm -hmm. that, or even the noodle, like crazy stuff, because sometimes me and Melissa, my, my partner, Melissa, we have different appetites sometimes. But sometimes I want those foods because I it feels like I'm getting hugged by a memory or something, you know? It's so true. And I agree 100% with you. Um, that's how I felt about um, Fidel. You know, I it took me a little while to eat it now because it reminds me of my mother um, because that was my comforting food. Um, Fidel is actually from a chef. That's one of my favorite foods, humbly, you know? <laughs> that's one of my favorite foods and uh, my mom used to get mad at me when I asked for it because she'll be like oh it's comida de pobre <laughs> you know? and I used to be like what are you talking about this is the best and um, you know to this day I don't make fideo just because of you know it reminds me of my mother but I do have people that make it for me and I sometimes go and buy some um from those little baggies they're amazing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's one of my comfort foods you know i feel like it hugs me it you know i kind of sit back and i kind of breathe in like wow this is it, it's amazing you know what food can do for you the memories it can yeah. spark you know it's it makes you feel good yeah. you know what I mean? even when you're you're feeling emotionally sick you know like i need a big hug from somebody who's not here like you're staying with the fideo which by the way from time to time, me and my partner get in arguments over how you're supposed to cook something because <laughs> she, 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 she does these enchiladas, do the flat enchiladas. I'm like, hey, are these done? What's going on? You know, and she you're like, that's everything else. Yeah, she's upset. And I'm like, ah. but it's just those little things, and 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 it's funny because even though it could be uh, the simple dish of fideo, Melissa, my partner Melissa has said that before to me too. Like how you said it's comida de pobre, I'm like. Oh my God, it's so good to me though. Cause I, I remember my grandma would even put, uh, what is it, green beans and some soups and stuff like that. Like and Melissa's all, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I can't get the chef mad, she won't cook for me no more, damn. <laughs> you know what, it's been, it's been so wild to, to, you know, to grow up and then, and then be a part of a, a community that is focused on, on foods and, and agriculture and how we, how we treat the earth, what we do with our water what we do with our food and, and it's really been a really good thing for a lot of the students and one of the things I thought was interesting is that some of the young students in elementary school they actually cook for themselves oh wow that's amazing yeah so that's why I wanted to connect with you too I'm like man Melissa like you could be teaching young little kids how to cook you know or something <laughs> like something simple food and things because I was very surprised but um it, it's some it, sometimes when you know when I'm doing art projects like that I get hooked up with young people that 
are, I don't know, outsiders or something. I don't know what you call them, you know, but <laughs> they, they have certain needs and stuff like that. And I'm just like, wow, if only we all knew each other. So that's why I knew that I had to interview you soon because oh. I wanted people to know that you're out there. And, and you know what, can you please tell me, like, I know, I'm, I, but this is part of the interview. But what are you up to next? I know you're doing a, a, you're taking a break and you're taking a pause, but will you, are you going to get back to it? Are you still thinking about it? Or I, I definitely want to get back to cooking. You know, I just don't know where or who or who am I going to be cooking with or where am I going to be working? I'm still trying to figure it out. You know, I'm trying, I don't feel pressured. I feel like if it, whatever opportunity comes my way, of course, I'm going to, you know, research, check it out. And um, I'm not going to say no, you know, um, I definitely, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really take some time before, you know, it start. Everything starts kind of. I'm saying the new normal. Um, yeah. To kind of think about it, like what, what, what adventures I want to get into, you know, um, because before, you know, I, I just was on the go, go, and never really stopped and thought about, you know, what. It's not what made me happy because cooking makes me happy. So whatever, I, whenever I was doing it, I was doing it, I was happy. Um, just kind of where I want to be, you know, it's yeah, kind of yeah. figure it out. You know? That's cool. I hope for those that are listening up that she's taking a break, but when she gets, <laughs> you know how to find her when she comes back. Yeah. But you also do desserts. And oh. that's, yeah, sometimes that's not a crossover for a chef. You know, sometimes chefs just cook, you know, meals. They don't get into desserts. Yeah. What kind of dessert do you need? Well, check this out. I actually hate baking <laughs> and I'm really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be completely honest. You know, I do it because I'm good at it. And, you know, it's something that, like I tell you, it unites people when they're like, hey, can you make me this cake? And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I love your cakes and stuff. And then right there, you made a new connection with someone new, you know? So it, it's from my heart. I know I can't say no, but, um, I, I, I just never, I don't have the patience for it. Like the, the time it, it consumes to make like one simple cake, um, uh, because I love the adrenaline of cooking. I love the pressure, the, you know, the creativeness of like, you can throw any ingredient and completely change the recipe, you know? And when you're baking, you really can't do that. You can't really just throw anything. You, really. you gotta sit and wait for it to be ready. Like, is it cool yet? Uh, yeah, so, you know, that's, that's why I'm telling you, like, I adventures, you know, like I participated in the taste of chocolate. And they asked me, hey, do you want to you want to compete? And I was like, sure, why not? You know, I've, I've never been a chocolatier, I've never made chocolate. Um, so I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna try it. And my best friend always encourages me, like pushes me and says, come on, you can do it. You're, you know, you're creative, you know, you love what you do, you can figure it out. So I did, you know, we ended up winning first place um, to, uh, at Taste of Chocolate for the best caterer. We had the yes. best, yeah, I'm, I I um, created a, cho a chocolate tiramisu bite, which mm. was amazing. You know, I tempered the chocolate, did everything I had to do. I spent hours, hours trying to figure it out, but I didn't give up, you know, my first time making chocolate and, you know, cho chocolate bites like that. And that's why I say, you know, I don't mind baking, you know, I'm good at it, <laughs> you know, cause I've practiced and I've done it so many times and I'm grateful for the people that have asked me to do their wedding cakes, their birthday cakes, you know, any celebration that I've done, you know, I'm grateful cause they've pushed me to, to yeah. do it so i i'm getting better and better at it because of you know the people because that still people. ask me yeah hell you know they made a whole show called nailed it right where they're <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> i'm perfect for that show <laughs> <laughs> but you actually you're doing well you know what i'm saying like these people they she needs christ including myself but you know what I, that's one of the things i'm allergic to oh look at oh, three no, pieces we had to make and gone in an hour three. to have 300 yeah, <laughs> I had to wait 300, yeah. Jesus Christ, so I'm allergic to chocolate, so I'm, I'm like, hey. oh, you would have to try it and I'll have the EpiPen ready. <laughs> and you're like, oh, come back. And like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's something, look at Mel would win, nail it. You suck, Melissa, I'm, oh, my, my partner, thank Jesus you. Christ. Thank you for the, <laughs> you know, oh my God. No, but how about this? Who's your who's your in-house guinea pig when you're like, taste this? Oh, my Check brother. It. Oh, my yeah? Brother, um, Ismael. 
Giz, I call him Giz. Uh, he's my guinea pig and he's been my guinea pig since I was 16. That's I started in, in the, in, <laughs> started in the kitchen. He's tasted almost everything that I've created that I've just been like, hey, you know, I'm going to try this out. Um, he's such a... He, I, I tell him we have this inside joke between me and him. You know, I always tell him loyalty because he's always <laughs> told me, you know, Melissa, you're going to be a great chef one time. You, um, you know, one of these days, it's going to be, you know, you're going to be a food service director. Um, you're going to do this. He's always been in my ear about you can do this, you can do that. And I always felt that he really didn't tell me the truth when something didn't taste good. But I guess he, he said, no, I would tell you if it didn't taste good, you know, I would tell you, I'm not lying to you. And I was like, oh, you have me, you know, my head is so hot up high because you never, tell me. <laughs> you know, it's your fault if someone ends up hating my dish and you're over here. No. And I've been so grateful. <laughs> I've been so grateful for him because he's, he's been one of the persons in my life that always reminded me how great and amazing I was, you know, um, Besides, you know, your parents always tell you they believe in you and this stuff, but to have a, a sibling, you know, a brother, you know, through this whole journey since I was 16 till the, today, you know, taste your food and, and just be amazed and ho hold you in such a high standards, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a lot of pressure sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you said you have to cook all the time, so, <laughs> you know, they're like. That she's the, the, she's the chef, you know, that happens and I believe it, but my Lord, like I keep thinking about it. I keep going back to like, damn, I wish we would have had you over for one of the, like, uh, we were going to have a symphony there and we were already planning to have you there. We're like, oh, this is going to be perfect. It's still in my mind. I still want to make that happen at some point. I just, I'm like, now I'm getting antsy. Like, I'm like, damn this quarantine. Right. You know, yeah. I miss people and I miss the eating all together in a big table space and having a good time. And that's the sort of energy that, you know, the chef brings, you know, everybody wants to be around, you know. It feeds your soul, you know, it feeds your soul. Um, I don't know how many times I've sat at a table and just kind of stepped back from, you know, kind of like zoned out and kind of like looked into the table where, you know, kind of those weird, yeah. you know, and just told myself how, how blessed, you know, uh, how blessed I am to have that gift because it's a gift, you know, um, to bring people joy, you know, like every bite they take, you know, it's, it's a different experience. You know, I, I don't know if you would have to be a chef to experience this, but I experience it every time I sit at a table and I see people eat my food and just look at me, uh, you know, that, that one look that they don't have to say anything like this is Bob. Right? Hell yeah. <laughs> they're like, damn. <laughs> you know, yeah. No, and, it, and you know what, sometimes it's crazy because I've gone up to the biosphere too, and you know they're they're doing all this scientific stuff, and then you go into the little restaurant they have. They're selling hot dogs. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you know, it would be amazing if they had something like like something that you make or something different, something you know, because you go all the way up there with the science, and then there's all this activity about mm -hmm. fresh food, and then they give you a hot dog. I'm like, so disappointing. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, why? It's a sad hot dog work. Like, <laughs> yeah, and you go and you see something beautiful, you know, you expect, you know, to have something, you know, counter the food, you know, be amazing too. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I feel you. <laughs> well, even if it was space food, I would have been cool with that. I'm like, oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> Which, by the way, maybe that would be a thing for you too. Like, they're doing, uh, they're growing food using lunar light. Oh, wow. They're growing not yeah, and they're growing, growing plants. Right now, they're growing plants that kind of hang so that, the, you know, the audience that comes, they could see that it's growing like strawberries and whatnot. That's but I think the main food is going to be mushrooms. Oh, wow. Because you could you could really saute them and like or like marinate them, right? Mm hmm Yeah. You but, are them everything. <laughs> Steam, saute, anything. Grill them. <laughs> Oh man, see if we're going on a long space trip, we need to take our chef. Like <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why they take me camping with them all the time. <laughs> First meal out in the camping of, out of nowhere. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Oh boy. How about this? Do you do you do the whole thing? Do you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Or you just do you eat one meal? When we camp or just and, and you yourself. Oh no. Um surprisingly I just eat one meal a day. <laughs> Jeez. And, but I make it good. Like today, I, I made a soup, you know, out of with nopales and tomatoes and like um, 
some beef steak that I had there left. Um, you know, I made myself a soup. You know, I'm I'm huge on soups. I love soups. I'm always making them. Everybody in the house thinks I'm crazy because it's hot, <laughs> and I'm always no. eating soup. <laughs> It's but so delicious. it's like I said, it's it's comforting food you need, you know. I think that's some of the main reason why I cook the way I cook, like for myself at home. Just um, I just want to feel warm. <laughs> I believe you on that because I feel the same way. I could almost eat soup all the time because I, I love the broth and everything. And I heard that there's a thing if, if you can cook a, a good soup, then you're a chef, like boom, boom. you know. I'm a chef. <laughs> Right, <laughs> because some people fail, and you're like, "Man, what's in here? You know, what's going on?" Yeah. But you know what? I've always, I've always been the guinea pig in my house. I'm like, "I'll eat it. I'll try it." You know. Good. And sometimes I'm like, "Why did I try it?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, be careful how I say that, or else you won't cook for me anymore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man. But you know what? This has been really fun. I'm glad I got a chance to talk to you. It's, been, it's nice to see people from the outside world. Right? I miss, you know, that's what I miss. I, I miss the connection with people, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, face to face. Um, like I tell all my friends, I hate texting. You know, I'm not a texting yeah. person. I'm not a messenger person. I love to talk to people and, in, in, you know, face to face. I like yeah. conversations over the phone. Um, I just feel like it could, you know, the voice, you know, people, you know, the, their expressions, you know, it, you see a lot more than what you see in a text, you know, and. That's huge. Yeah. But you know what? There is something else. Yeah. So you had like the mega dream. What would be your mega dream? Like a mega wish? Like um, for just in life? <laughs> well, for yourself. I mean, for whatever you feel. But um, for me, just to find find like somewhere in my career, and um, where I can passionately do what I love to do. You know, um, I know it's, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, it, cooking makes you happy or, you know, do it and stuff. I just want to find something that I, I'm able to do and be happy with that I'm, I'm also giving back, you know, yeah. um, you know, with a purpose, you know, a purpose to what I'm doing. Um, but that would be, you know, that would be one of my, my dream things just to kind of get back into the kitchen and give it my 100%, you know, back feel like I felt when, you know, I was 10 years old, you know, like wanting to cook again. You know, that's, that's, awesome. that's what I want. You know, I even, yeah, I even have my, like, my, my own knives. Like, I keep them separate from Melissa's. I'm like, these are mine. Because <laughs> there's things that you fillet the fish real good or, or you know, you cut meat real no, nice. that's how it's supposed really? to be. <laughs> do you have some? Do you have knives like that? Do you have a collection? I do have a, a little bag where I keep my knives. You know, these these are my professional knives that I used when I was a chef. Um, they're still put away. I don't use them at home. I have my home knives. Um, the reason I use them is because those are set for when I'm in the kitchen, you know, when I'm a chef, <laughs> you know, when I'm on. That, that's what Hell I'm, yeah. Yeah. See, that's sweet. I love all that stuff. The only thing is that I'm bad at timing. Like, I'll make stuff, I'm mixing stuff, and I'll walk away, and i start painting or something. And yeah. Melissa's like, I smell smoke. And I'm like, oh, oh shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm one of those people that I have to stay in the kitchen. I have to stay in the kitchen. I don't like, you know, going back and forth or multitasking outside of the kitchen. You know, I can be cooking five, six dishes at the same time and, you know, be back and forth. But um, doing other stuff, you know, that's why I love my family because they're like, you know, what do we give you? What do we this? And we'll leave you alone, but cook. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Have you seen those? Have you seen those people? Like, uh, I think it's um, there's some in, in in Cuba, but in like in like New York and things like that, where the chefs make their own little private studio and they have like a, a, a they cater to a party of people. Oh yeah, the pop ups. The would pop -ups. you ever do something like that? You know what? That I would love to do something like that. I've I've thought about it when I first saw it. You know, happen. Um, the idea of doing one came to me when I was in New York. They did the hot Cheeto pop up. The oh, Cheeto. Yes. Yeah, so this chef, um, of course, partnered with Hot Cheetos with Cheeto, and um, they created recipes with hot with Cheetos, hot Cheetos, cheese puffs, all this. They created all these dishes. Um, 
and they popped up in New York. They were completely sold out in minutes, minutes really? of their whole entire time they were there as pop, as pop up. And that just kind of like, I was like, you know what, one day I would love to do something like that, you know, create a menu that, you know, that people would come and want to eat, you know, that would want to try my food, just, you know. Yeah, with the Cheeto ingredient, that kind of sounds like uh, prison food real quick. I'm like, what? <laughs> right? It was actually pretty amazing. They had a Cheeto crusted lamb rack. Yeah, they, it was it was amazing. They had like this fancy mac and cheese. You know, you can look it up and research when they did that pop up in New York and you'll see their menu. It was it was amazing. I, I wish I would have mm. been able to get a spot there. But, you know, imagine just getting there. It's probably sold out for months. <laughs> I know. I'm, well, I'm thinking about what the monies would be to do that. That's why I like the way that uh, Cuba did it. Like, you kind of like incognito, kind of like, here, you know, this one, like a speakeasy type of style, you know? Um, I like that. But tell me this, what's the, the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Like, um, I don't know, because, you know, um, eating snails is not strange to me no more. <laughs> that used to be strange to me as a kid. <laughs> but I... I, when I was in Oaxaca, I got to eat um, live, um, like, I won't say it's those, um, I don't know how they, I forgot how they said it in Spanish, but it was like kind of like crickets. Oh my God, yeah. yes. So they were live and they were just chopping up right there and they're like, here, toss it in this sauce and here, eat it. And I'm like looking at them all crazy, like, okay, <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> It's yeah. Like a little protein, right? Yeah. The, the little... Yeah, they were actually very delicious. They were crunchy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you did the Oaxacan tour, right, of mole? Um, yes. When I was in Oaxaca, um, I backpacked Mexico for a month, and um, it was a gift from my uncle, my uncle Alex, you know, um, for my birthday, because he's like, "What can I get someone that you know?" I, I'm so humble, you know. I'm a simple person. For me, giving me your time is the best gift you can give me, you know? So him, he, he, that's what he wanted to kind of like figure out something to give me that that's how I, I felt about a gift. And that was the best thing. He spent a whole month with me, you know, one-on-one -on -one traveling in Mexico, trying all these amazing foods. And when we got to Oaxaca, he knows I love mole. It's one of my favorite foods. Um, we tasted seven different kinds of moles, seven different ways. <laughs> We've actually <laughs> sat there for almost two hours making mole from scratch. It was amazing. Yeah, it was. That's beautiful. You know, life changing experience, you know, as a chef to have an opportunity to travel like that. You know, I've traveled a lot of places here in the States. I've traveled up and down the States. But Mexico, the beauty of Mexico, just kind of like, man, this is where I want to retire. <laughs> you know, well, <laughs> it's beautiful. Know. They gave, gave you like inspiration for a lifetime on that trip. You know, just, that, that, I, see, I could see that dream, like, just, it inspires me hearing it, you know? <laughs> You're like, I'm going to go back. Hell yeah, 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 I got I to um, see the, the Museum of Frida Kahlo, which was beautiful, in yeah. Cuernavaca. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. You know, it was an amazing oh, trip. Just the food won me over, you know, and, of course, the beauty of Mexico, but the food... <laughs> You can it's amazing. Huh? Yes. Yes. The beautiful. tortillas are different. Oh, you can, yeah. Like when you talked about the energy and the time that it takes to make something, you can taste all those flavors in there. Yeah. That's oh, what I'm boy. talking about. You know, I don't know if it's the sweat in our hands or the vibe. <laughs> it makes everything good. Right? <laughs> Ooh, hell yeah. Well, there was a big thing happening too with uh, the border towns like Tijuana. Oh, they, they were having like resurgence of like like food and eateries and stuff like that. Had you been out there to like the border town? Yes, yes. Uh, my my um, biological mother lives in Tijuana, so I often oh, go cool. and visit um, at least twice a year. And I do the whole. Oh man, there's so many great places to um, to just the tacos. You know, <laughs> the simplicity yeah. simplicity of tacos. You know, wins me over every time. <laughs> Over there, I think Absolutely. I don't try anything else when I go to Tijuana besides their tacos and their corn, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what I like is uh, tacos de tripa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Melissa um, stays away from she's like, no. No. <laughs> I, I'm more of a El Pastor girl. <laughs> oh, yes. Good, too. 
Oh, you're making Wait. me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and there's something about it that you could be walking around and you go get a street taco like yep. it's bomb and then the hot sauce the chile there's like that's a whole another other topic because i love chile yeah i don't know you, you like hot stuff yes i do um that's why i eat a lot of thai food and a lot of like um Ooh. yeah it's it's my favorite it's just anything hot <laughs> oh man i love it no i we've been trying all kinds of stuff even like uh there's this one it's this indian food they have a mushroom uh mushroom matar Ooh. have you seen that it's delicious yeah. oh there's just so many things when it comes to food and i think that i mean that's why i was like i gotta interview melissa because so many people they need to try different things they need to they need to go with different chefs sometimes because you can really tell the energy. Yeah, And I think that it's something special, right? I agree, yes. And you know, I'm always trying places here in Arizona, you know, your local places. Um, I love it. That's that's why mostly all my travels have been because I want to go check out a restaurant, you know? Right. Um, <laughs> you know, I went to LA just to try um, um, Cuba, um, Cuba, this place. Um, it was amazing, you know, like... Was it called the uh, Versailles? Uh, huh? Was it called like Versailles or Versailles? Uh, Havana. Havana? Ooh, I don't know. No, yeah. I haven't tried that it's one. It's Irvine? Ooh. Yeah, it's amazing. Like their buffet spread is out of this world. You know, I even went and I'm like, hey, I, I you know, I want to see the chef. <laughs> you know? It's amazing the way they roast a, a whole entire pig, you know, to put out there and, and set it so beautiful, you know, the presentation, the color, you know, that's what I've noticed. As soon as I walked up to their buffet, that's what caught my eye, the presentation, you know, of everything. I was like, wow, this is beautiful. You know, it's, it's, it's something that I appreciate, you know, because, you know, it, all the thought that goes in it. I know it because I, I've been there. I stand right there and I my head creates, you know, like I'm just creating. So, you know, I, I appreciate when it's something beautiful presented to you like that, you know. I'll, I'll, pay, I'll pay what I got to pay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know it. I know it. We went all the way to Chicago and we're like, let's try a deep dish pizza because mm. I've never had it. So did we always try different stuff, but... While I was in Minnesota, there's some funny stuff out there. There's this thing called the Lucta fish. Ooh. It's kind of crazy, though. Like, it's almost, like, fermented. It's, like, on its way out of being rotten. I'm like, I don't know, guys. Like, <laughs> Die. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm like, I don't know if I could do this. But they even, there's this thing called hot dish. So it's almost like a casserole. Mm -hmm. And then they layer it with tater tots. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're very nice about it. I was like, what is this, guys? Yeah. Me and the dude from China were like, what are we supposed to eat this like <laughs> just because we were wondering we're like is this a cake of potatoes like i don't know like <laughs> so, sometimes it's difficult especially for the guy that was from china he was just like like puzzled by what we were eating as a matter of fact one of my go-to things during the summertime is the nopales with spinach and like tomate like kind of like sauteed uh, i can eat nopales every day <laughs> Right? You know, I've done they are so good. different kind of ways of making nopales, you know, that I don't get tired of them. <laughs> do, you, oh, do you know about the U of A extension, the kitchen that's down the street from my Galleria on 4th? No, no, no. See, that's why I want to connect you when everything gets back to that whatever normal they want to call it. Having you in the neighborhood at the U of A extension would be awesome because they have a little garden there. And to, if you did something like that, where you did a food prep to reintroduce folks that like eat this dish, because sometimes people get in the knack of just baking something that's really simple, like mac and cheese or that top ramen or, you know, but having something like the nopal, you could feel the sun and you could feel like, yes. like the juice or something, right? I agree. The nopal to me is a steak, you know, <laughs> you know, that's how I feel about it. Um, just because it's, you know, it brings me back to being a child, you know, eating it, but, um, just, it's delicious, you know, it's, you know, you see it, you know, when it's, they're growing, you, you know, you pick it, you clean it, you know, that whole experience <laughs> just, you know, brings me back to being a child and it's, that's how I feel every time I eat them, you know, and I used to hate <laughs> them. <laughs> but it's beautiful. I love that you have that memory because that it is real. That's a, that's a real thing. Those are the things that comfort us and whatnot. Do you watch this TV show? It's called Fuck That's Delicious. No, I haven't. Uh, oh, I got it. It's with 
Yeah, it's with this guy named um, Bronson. I forget. He's this big. He's kind of a heavy set dude. But they go everywhere and they chow down. I'm like, damn. And they make everything look good. I'm like, oh, they make me hungry. Yeah. Do you see, watch that, like that? that would be something fun to do. You know, I feel like I would have so much fun with, you know, not only trying all these amazing foods everywhere, but I feel like, you know, kind of putting in that little spark of passion of, oh, you know, this ingredient, you know, I feel like when I cook, I cook in layers. You know, that's what I always tell people because they're like, how did you get the flavor to go this way? And this, You know, I tell them all the time, it's the way you layer, you cook in layers, you know, you put the garlic yeah. in, you, you, you know, let the flavor, you know, and then you put the onions and let the flavors infuse. And I get all into it, all passionately. And they're like, oh, no way. We can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's some things that take a long time. And I always see the, the people who are on food challenges. They try to do this one dish. I want to say it's risotto where you kind of like mm, you yeah. cook it and you pour in the, the the broth right yes and it builds up you have to let it build up and i'm like they're on a 20 minute <laughs> timer <laughs> I said, don't try those impossible dishes but it is possible you know i've seen chefs do it you know it's just really? the patience it's just the patience of doing things the way you know the temperature the way you do you know everything it's like i say you you the way you just kind of like put everything together is what matters. You know, the people there, some chefs are very creative on getting certain things done that can take up to one or two, two hours to make, you know, that's interesting. Cause I, I I'm far removed. I can't even do that, <laughs> but you know, what's a challenge for me at my grandma's house in LA, we had a, an actual gas fire, like on, on the stove, you know, gas pilot here in Arizona, we have an electric one. Uh -oh. we, you, you don't like that, huh? It's different, right? Those. That's why I'm so good for a gas stove because I would never cook again in this house. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Um, there's something about the gas stove. You know, I feel like I can't, I don't cook the same as an electric, but maybe it's just me, you know? Well, it's the temperature. You really can't figure it out because you don't see it. You're like, yeah. is it on? <laughs> yeah. So true. Yeah. Yes. That's always going to be a debate right there. <laughs> right? Forever. Forever yeah. in a day, man. You know what? I have one last question. So you see, there's a, there's a couple of these crazy shows, and I find them that's on Vice Channel, if you're ever interested in looking at it. It's called Fuck, It's Delicious. And they also use um, what, you know, because in, in California, in Colorado, uh, marijuana is is legal. Mm, yeah. But a lot of these shows, they actually use it as an ingredient. Have you ever used it as an, a food ingredient? Yes, I have, actually. Well, we used to have our little 420 parties. <laughs> back. Oh, man, I love you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we used to make cakes and butters and you know um i we've got creative with that you know you can imagine oh <laughs> somehow created afterwards <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know what it, it's amazing you know that'd be kind of a cool thing to kind of like do a pop-up you know when it's kind of legalized here in arizona to do like an infused kind of menu that'd be awesome let me know uh, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> You can hold it at my shop. We'll make you a kitchen. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> that would be really interesting. I, you know what? I know that you're taking a pause and thinking, you know, strategizing in that. But I just I just got to know you. So I hope that I get to, you know, eat your food one of these days. Oh, and you know, I always have dinner parties, you know, here at my house. So, yes, you are more than welcome when everything goes back to the regular norm that they're going to consider normal. Um, you are welcome to come and, and try some, you know, we'll do a whole spread, you know, of the dishes. Um, you know, oh, yeah. And um, you'll love it. You know, just the creativity that it goes into all these traditional and classic dishes that you, you know, you're like, oh, I didn't know you can make them like that, you know. So it'll be fun. Yeah, it is fun. You know what? You just reminded me. There was a, a a private chef we met that is from out of um, Seattle, and she was cooking for us at the Biosphere too, because I was one of the resident artists. And I walked in, and I was like, "Oh man, that food's gonna be good," because she was barefoot. I was like, "Oh man, she's comfortable." <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, it's, right? I'm like, "Oh man, it's good food." So she's really. She, I mean, that's why I like to visit with different different chefs and see how you cook, because it's really it is an art form, the way that you consider and think about all of us and, and the way you consider the food, the way you treat it and whatnot. I love all of it, man. I, I'm like, man, I could keep talking about all this. <laughs> you we know? can go on and on about quality of food, you know, just every dish that, you know, it's at home or it's somewhere else or I'm cooking for a client. It's, you know, the quality is the same. The passion behind it is the same. 
you know, you want to put good out, good food out, you know, you want them to remember you like, Hey, you know, I get a lot of people that come to me like, Oh, remember when you made me those tacos? Remember when you made me that, you know, it, it's, it feels good. You know, it feeds your soul. You know, it makes me feel like, you know, that just that little bit, you know, kind of brings back, you know, why, why I do what I do, you know? Yeah. So what's your favorite, uh, like pairing drink, like something that you go, your go-to drink with it, like something that you serve? What, what do you like the most? You know, I've never got into wines that much um, because someone always else paired it for me. Um, but, you know, I'm, I would say like one of the, one of the things that I've enjoyed growing up with every dish that I've had um, has been Jamaica. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Uh, typical Mexican that likes to drink Jamaica with everything in <laughs> agua frescas, you know? So um, maybe, you know, I would venture into the wine list, maybe now that I have free time, you know. <laughs> you never know. I'm just saying, because sometimes, you know what, I've had stuff and I tried it, I'm like, oh, hey, this, this actually tastes good with that. Like, not for nothing, but like when you're eating mariscos, a modelo tastes good. Like, <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah. And you're like, oh, man, that's good. But there was some, there was one more thing. I don't, and I can't remember it now, but I was, it was, it was food related. Damn it. <laughs> But, you know, I'll remember sometime. Oh, that's what I was going to say. If folks who are listening and tuning in and they're interested in asking you questions or how to contact you for future stuff, how can they get a hold of you? Um, Through Instagram. My messenger is always open, you know, on Instagram. I always, you know, I'm always on, on Instagram. That's one of the things that um, I, I have all my work up there. So they kind of get an idea of what I do. And, you know, um, I'm also on Facebook, but, you know, messenger too, you know, I you know, I respond back and I've gotten a couple clients from there. And um, yeah, I'm definitely open, you know, um, when everything kind of goes back to norm and people want, are looking to do something. Yeah. We do some pop ups. We're like, hell yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, so you can find her at La Chica Chef, right? Yes. Yeah, so if you're looking on Instagram, La Chica Chef, Melissa Hernandez, super cool. You met her just now. You see all of her personality. And then, and then when you taste the food, that's something else. That's different. Oh, look, my little guard dog. Sorry about that. <laughs> He's still on watch, man. But no, Melissa, you know what? I really appreciate you taking time to share yourself with, with us here on in Instagram. Um, it's really much appreciated. I've really enjoyed knowing you since the moment I met you. I can't wait till we can have you in again and, like, share you with other people because there's so many places that need you, like the U of A kitchen. H&S was going to make a kitchen. But, and they're very much connected to Chicanos por la Causa, oh, okay. and they have a culinary program. So I, I have you in mind for a number of things when we get back to the normal, nice. if you still want to cook Yeah, I, you know, an adventure. I'm ready for it. <laughs> that too, man. Maybe we can take you on an artist residency adventure. We'll be like, we have a private chef with us. Right. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Because then we can take you. On, on, oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. It was very much necessary because... I want to show everybody out there um, as a community how we, we come together and we, we help each other. You know, it's the culinary, because everybody's like, you can have a, a chef. I'm like, yeah, culinary arts, man. Like, what's up with that, you know? Yeah, that's one but, of the things that people don't realize that, you know, as chefs, we create, you know? You eat with your eyes and that's what you watch, you know, piece of art right there in front of you. <laughs> you, just eat, you just eat this one. <laughs> and it tastes good. <laughs> Awesome, right? Oh, hell yeah. And we, you know where you want to go back to. Those are the staple things, you know. There's locations all over the world. But, like, now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, man, M Melissa, man, she would have, if you would have came to, uh, to Uruguay with us, you would have been to the farmer's market. You would have seen all the empanadas. They had, like, 50 different empanadas. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. So the world is an adventure. When we get back to it, I hope that you can have your continued adventure in the culinary arts. Yes. Looking forward to it. Yeah. So thank you again, Melissa. I'm going to let you go and thank you people for joining us and you can find her again at La Chica Chef. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great week. Thanks so much.